going to look at today is looking at cultural diffusion and indigenous groups. So we'll look at two different groups over two different uh, videos. So what we're going to focus on now is looking at Tibet and how their culture has changed over a period of time. All right. So looking at its geographical location, it's very, very isolated. We looked at this in unit one. Okay, so also known as the rooftop of the world or being on the roof of the world due to its high elevation, very, very isolated, quite cold. It does have various minerals and resources, but to get to quite difficult. So it's generally very, very remote, right? So again, you can see here on the map, if I look at meters above sea level, around about sort of 4,500 to six thousand meters above sea level so very high difficult to get to part of the himalayan region here all right so you can see here the elevation right now if i do have a look at it and we go back the history really is important okay so it did function as an independent country until 1949 1949 is really really important uh, not just for tibet but because of what happened in china all right so this was the formation basically in the rise of the chinese revolution so the formation of the People's Republic of China. Now, we talked about Chairman Mao in Unit 1, right, how he was really, really important with regards to population, but he also wanted a large population, a large army, looking to be a very, very powerful nation, all right? So this is a really important period of time, 1949, the Chinese Revolution. This is when they started to send the military... Uh, migrants later on into Tibet. This is when I start seeing a change in culture here. Okay, so this is the Chinese Revolution, all right? So establishment of the People's Republic of China here. Okay, so 1950, a year after, basically China invaded Tibet. Now again, think about the majority, the ethnic group in China, the main ethnic group is the Han, all right? So again, having different values, having a different lifestyle, so this is where we start seeing different uh, elements of cultural contact here. Okay, so 1951, so things happened quite quickly. Chairman Mao, very, very hungry to expand. So basically we've started to take over and annex areas of Tibet. So 1951, they signed an agreement. Obviously Tibet's too small. They couldn't keep the Chinese military out. There's no point in going to war. All right, so Tibet's independence has vanished in 1951. So an agreement has been signed. Basically, China has control over any foreign and external relations, right? Now, basically, what happened is the Chinese military, they were then established and stationed partly in Tibet, right? Now, there was basically an agreement that Tibet could continue with its political system and religious freedom in return. And unfortunately, we saw that it hasn't really happened as a result, all right? So again, religion was really important. Um, religious freedom was also very, very important there. But again, slightly different to your traditional Han Chinese. Okay, so 1951 is also very important. So go back to 1949, uh, rise of the People's Republic of China, 1950 invasion, 1951, we've got an agreement here. Okay, so basically we've got Chinese colonial rule, all right? So if, I, if you forget the dates, you can just go back and look at uh, People's Republic of China coming in, invading, signing an agreement. Then you've got Chinese, basically, colonial rule. And that's when we sort of say that we've started to erode the Tibetan culture or their way of life, their traditional way of life, all right? So a lot of people weren't very happy in Tibet. So this has led to a bit of an uprise later on in 1959, because basically the Chinese government really tried to get a lot of people from China to move into the region. So you could start to see an erosion of culture, slightly different. All right, so the big uprise in 1959, um, that meant that the Dalai Lama eventually left the country to seek refuge in India, all right? Now, again, if I look at the Dalai Lama, the 14th spiritual leader of the Tibetans, okay, so this is also a very important part of their culture and who they are, okay? So he was forced to, to flee the country, all right? And a lot of people went with him as he was forced to flee, all right? Now, again, this is starting to see uh, a huge erosion of their culture. 
and it's estimated that over 80,000 people followed him and left Tibet as a result. Okay, so again, very, very spiritual group of people. So a little bit of uh, conflict here. So Buddhism is very important. The Dalai Lama is very important, very, very spiritual. And then what I'm seeing is a lot of Han uh, are moving into the area here. Okay, so in 1965, things went a little bit further. China has announced that uh, Tibet will now be an autonomous region. So basically, you're now part of China, all right, but you can sort of run things your own way, but you're now part of the People's Republic of China here. Okay, so what they did is, this is now part of the People's Republic of China. You can, if you wish, uh, run it how you want. However, what the Chinese government started to do was they started to encourage a lot of the Han Chinese to migrate and move into Tibet. Now, they created jobs through the railway and various infrastructure projects. So they weren't just getting people to move in. There was work for them to do. And this was also a point of uh, conflict as well because the Tibetans felt that a lot of the uh, jobs went to, and also the higher paying jobs, went to the Han Chinese who the Chinese government was encouraging to move in, all right? So this has further eroded the Tibet's culture and their actual way of life. So more and more and more Han Chinese have moved in. The military has also increased. A railway has been built, which has helped facilitate and move more and more of these Han Chinese here. So if you look at the connection here, the China-Tibet Railway, you can just look at these links here all the way, right? Okay, so it's quite connected now. So a massive infrastructure project was built and completed in 2005. So this is connected a very remote and isolated region. All right, so again, we're talking about cultural diffusion and spread. How did this happen? Okay, so invasion, right, migration, infrastructure, setting up jobs. And we start to see conflict and people are actually fleeing this part of the world. So it's made it a lot easier and it's sped up migration, all right, as a result here. Okay, so what we've started to see post the completion of this railway and jobs being provided here is more and more Han Chinese have moved into Tibet. Okay, the other thing is there are a lot of resources in this part of the world, and obviously this has also created further jobs with the railway. We're also able to extract and trade and move some of these resources out of the region here. So as I said, there's a little bit of conflict because the Chinese government used Han labor to actually build um, the railway. So this is also a bit of conflict here and tension here, right? So like, okay, I'll just show you a very, very quick video and then we're finished on this here. Because all we're looking at is how uh, an element of culture has been diffused or a particular the Himalayan region of Tibet, with its capital Lhasa, home to a largely Buddhist population of some 3 million people. The territory has been under China's sway for centuries, but it remained largely independent until the communist takeover. In 1950, the Chinese army invaded Tibet and defeated local forces in Chamdo. A decade later, China crushed an uprising by Tibetans, opposed to reforms intended to cement Beijing's control. Tibet's spiritual leader, the Dalai Lama, fled the region and went into exile. Beijing later formalized its annexation of Tibet, designating it officially as an autonomous administrative region. China's current president, Xi Jinping, says more must still be done to bring Tibet in line with Communist Party thinking. Beijing is planning to spend billions on infrastructure projects, including improving rail links between the mountainous region and the rest of China. President Xi also says Beijing must step up its education efforts in Tibet, starting with young people. He's called for teachers to plant the seeds of love for China in the region's schools. It's part of what Beijing sees as a push to rein in separatism 